grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning and welcome to Sunday worship here at St. Christopher's. It's so nice to be broadcasting direct from the building again after being on a two-week quarantine because of some exposure to the virus. But we are back here and delighted to be so, and so welcome to worship. If you have your service booklet, uh, please join with me. If you're in need of a service booklet or know someone who is, please let us know and we'll be sure to send them one. Lord, open our lips. And our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him in the words of the Jubilate. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please join me in reading a portion of Psalm 105, which is printed on your bulletin insert, and we'll recite this in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord in his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God, his judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise of his thousands of generations, the covenant he has made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac which he established as a statue for the life of an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, To you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted inheritance. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. Laban said to Jacob, because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, and the name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were lovely, and Rachel was graceful and beautiful. Jacob loved Rachel. So he said, I will serve you for seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. Laban said, it is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go in to her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. But in the evening, he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Laban gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah to be her maid. When morning came, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you for Rachel? Why have you deceived me? And Laban said, This is not done in our country, giving the younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one, and, you will, and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. So Jacob did so, and completed her week. Then Laban gave him his daughter Rachel as a wife. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to be God. God. Together, let us recite the canticle, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore, you shall draw water from rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, 
give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion. Bring out your joy, for the great one in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seed, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field which someone found and hid, and then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's truly good to be here with you. I dearly wish that we could all be gathered together in this building as one gathering around the table. As you know, the coronavirus continues to be a very elusive and dangerous situation. We've had spikes in many areas. As recently as this past week, it seems that Bayside, right next door to us, has been a spike. It's a very strange thing that we have this virus that is imperceptible to the eye. You can't see it, you can't smell it, you can't hear it. And yet it's as real as can be. It's tremendously devastating. It can really be a huge challenge. In fact, such a challenge that across the world, it's commanding nearly all of our attention, all of our resources, all of our strength, spiritually, emotionally, physically even. It's that big of a deal. Well, today we hear a string of, of parables in the words of Jesus. And it's interesting how it's kind of a rapid fire succession of parables because he's trying to give perspective to the disciples and all who are following him of just how rich and deep that the kingdom is. It serves as an absolute total counterpoint to what we've experienced with the destructive nature of the virus, if you think about it. He talks about the mustard seed. You've seen mustard, the coarse ground, I mean, inside the seed, isn't it this big? tiny little seed. And he talks about how it grows to be the biggest of bushes, even a tree, and birds fly into it. Well, we know from natural order that the mustard plant is much smaller. But he's not talking about the natural order, is he? 
He's talking about this miraculous nature that can come about because with God, all things are possible. The things as small as a seed grow into something big, may not look big to us, but to a little animal, they look huge. The important thing is that the kingdom of heaven is a total counterpoint to what we witness in the virus. What we think about and understand about the kingdom of heaven is, again, you cannot see it. You can't hear it. You can't smell it. And yet it's as real as can be because you can recognize it. Not just kingdom of heaven in terms of where we find ourselves in the nearest presence with Christ at the end of our lives, but indeed the kingdom of heaven right here in this place and in this time. Things change so much, but you can still get glimpses of it. When you see a child smiling with an ice cream cone, or you see them playing out in the pool, or you see people walking and breathing in the fresh air, hearing about someone who has uh, recovered from the virus. You can see evidence of grace and mercy all over the place. That's the kingdom of God. And in some ways it's hidden from our view, but in many ways it's there if we see it. And so Jesus tries to give them all of these different images. We're talking about the mustard seed, the pearls, the net of the fish, all of these, it's interesting to note, and in every case, there's action involved. Think about it. If the man looking for pearls finds the one, and then he does everything he can to get that pearl, it's that valuable. It has that much, it penetrates his soul that much. Or the fish, if they put out a net and get this tremendous catch, and they sift out the bad and have plenty of the good. Things are of utmost value when they reach that deep into us. And again, as a counterpoint to all of our time and attention and resources and spiritual and emotional strength going to battle this negative thing, but the kingdom of God is asking the same in reverse. The kingdom of God is God is asking us through the first commandment to love God with all of your strength and soul and your mind and your being. That, that we reach down that deep into ourselves to be able to recognize the kingdom of God and to indeed participate in it. It's that valuable. It's that important. And it really requires us to have deep faith. But indeed, all things are possible with God. Indeed, we are all able to take even the smallest of seeds and put them on the path and have them turn into great things. We've been seeing some of that in our work down in the city. We, have, we continue to do that, even among the scare of the coronavirus. This Saturday, coming up, we're going to be collecting school supplies so the kids whether they are able to go back to school physically or whether they end up doing it virtually. Either way, they need supplies. Particularly if it's virtual, they have really no way to get them because so often when they go to school, they get the supplies from their teachers. That's a small seed that we can plant, but we can do it in such a big way. It has such a big impact. It's that valuable. It's that important. These kind of things re require, even with coronavirus, they require our deepest attention, our, our resources, and our soul and strength and mind. That's what I hear in today's gospel reading. The importance of sowing our seeds, gathering up the right pearls. And as Jesus says at the end of this tremendous gospel reading, that therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure what is new and what is old. Because things change all the time. Think about where we are today versus where we were even five months ago. And we're required to keep seeking out the kingdom of God. We sing that, seek ye the kingdom of God. And we do it by sifting through the old and the new. There's good in both. This technology that I'm speaking to you from right now is really quite new, it's certainly new to us just in the last few months. But there's also wonderful things that we can reach down deep into ourselves that may be old and become new. 
I have one that I'm wearing right now. You might notice that I'm wearing a stole that doesn't exactly match our altar bundle. Well, I wore this intentionally because this was a stole that was hand embroidered by a woman by the name of Kit Hermanson. She was a dear friend. She died about 10 years ago. She lovingly needle or uh, embroidered every stitch in this stole. And look at how beautiful it is. She had this command, her whole attention, her resources, her strength, to give it to me as an ordination gift. I, at that time, had to put behind things that were old so that I would rise up to the occasion of being an ordained priest, of taking on a cure, of being with a parish family like this, that that set of holy orders would command all of my strength and soul, my attention, my resources, my faculties. This is the kingdom of heaven. Kit died some time after she gave me this stole, and I have always treasured it as one of my most treasured possessions because of the love that was put into it. So I bid to you that even in this very strange and difficult time, what little seed can we put in the ground together or individually or among others that we don't even know that can really rise up and bring that tremendous goodness that commands people's full attention, that it instills and inspires in them the need to put their resources forward, that we overcome the bad with the good, that we overcome fear, which there's plenty of out there, the belief and faith and love. These are pearls that we can all gather together and that we can all share and we can do it in an extremely loving way. I invite you to join with me in confessing our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy. For we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope. And we shall never hope in vain. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not the things eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. 
Give us this day such blessing through you, our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. For God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers and intercessions. We have a new system for this that has been outlined in our weekly update and in our Friday announcement for the Sunday service. It gives a link where you can give us your, your prayers so we can keep those up to date right up until we worship. But in addition to that, I invite you, if you have not used that, to put into the chat line who you're praying for today. And we'll lift up prayers together for that person or persons. We pray, Lord, for all people who continue to be affected by the coronavirus. We pray that people, even though it's an enduring, long thing, that they may have the patience, that they may be guided with grace and mercy, that they may find creative ways, innovative ways, energetic ways to plant those seeds and reveal the glimpse of your kingdom here in this place. Let us be truly kingdom focused together. We pray for healing for people. We pray especially for Julie and Jenny, Nels, Larry, Kathy. We pray for the repose of the soul of Sue, Kathy, Anne. We pray for Joyce, Ken, Betsy, John, Maida, Mary, Jean, Jennifer. Pray also today for Peter, Jonah, Floyd, Ravi, Jim, Mary, Pam, June, Ravi, Laron, Julie, Tom, Kirsten, Jeff, Ryan. Pray also for the repose of the soul of Nance, her dear niece, Anna. She continues to work through things. Pray for all who have died, that they may be lifted up and risen in glory in your nearest presence. And that those who mourn may be comforted and given peace. Pray for all caregivers. Pray for all medical providers. We pray for our leaders, that they may be inspired by your kingdom to set aside their differences and pettiness to work together for all that lifts up and edifies and benefits the common good and not the few. Today we'll close with the general thanksgiving. As we say this together, I urge you to hear the words that we're saying very carefully, because I think it expresses the deep gratitude we have for the great expanse of God's heavenly kingdom here in our lives. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks 
for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time of one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. For